Hey everybody, what do those three pedals do on the piano? Whether you're talking about an upright piano or whether you're talking about a grand piano, all three of those pedals do different things and are used for different purposes. So in this video, we're gonna be covering both upright and grand pedals, their functions, and when you should or could be using them. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get started on this right away. So let's start in front of a grand piano. Now, most grand pianos, like 98% of them that are sold today, 2019, 2020, are equipped with three pedals. And for the most part, those three pedals have the same function from piano to piano. There are a few differences, and I will mention those, but we're gonna start uh, on this one, which is the uh, three pedals with the conventional functionalities. Let's talk about what that is. So the pedal on the right, which is called the damper or the sustain pedal. Now the reason it's called the damper pedal is when you press it down, all these felt dampers actually raise up. The reason it's sometimes called the sustain pedal is of course, once the dampers are up, the strings are free to sustain as long as the damper is up. So that's why sometimes you'll hear both uh, uh, names used for that pedal. So when we're playing single notes on a grand piano, as soon as our finger comes off the note, we hear the note stop ringing. And the reason of course is if, as soon as the key um, is uh, let go of, then that damper comes back down uh, stops the string and the string stops ringing. As soon as we put the pedal down and we do the same thing, now all those strings are free to ring even once we've taken our finger off the key. And so things like this sound a lot different than and so that is what the right pedal does. The middle pedal on a grand piano is what's called a sostenuto. And this is something that very few piano players actually make use of. It's a highly specific technique and a, and a purpose for this. Um, you can almost think of it like a selective sustain pedal. So it works like this. If you have one or two or five notes pressed down and you want those notes to sustain, but those are the only notes that you want to sustain, that's where the middle pedal comes in. So I'll demonstrate. So let's say that we want that B flat to sustain, but that's the only one. So we'll press that note down, then we'll press down the middle pedal. You can hear that it keeps going, and you may be able to see that that damper is still up, but none of the other ones are. Now if we do, that's still just the only note that's playing. And that would be the same as if we did that with two notes. Which is a lot different than using the right pedal to do the same thing. Which as you know, because we just talked about it, means all the dampers are up and all the strings are ringing. So there's some romantic music that has been written. There's composers like Debussy and Ravel that make use of this pedal. But for the most part in mainstream piano playing, the sostenuto is a seldom used feature. Doesn't mean it's not useful, doesn't mean that it's, it doesn't produce interesting effects and compositional possibilities. It's just used less commonly. Um, the left pedal, is called the unicorda, or sometimes referred to as the soft pedal. And this one is uh, maybe the most misunderstood pedal um, of them all for people who are not already grand piano owners. In fact, I still routinely get probably a half dozen calls a year from people who have just received their brand new grand piano, and they call me up to tell me the piano's broken because when they press the left uh, pedal, the keys move. And I patiently reassure them that no, the piano is not broken, um, that's actually what's supposed to happen. And so if you look very carefully when I'm pressing this pedal, you'll see that the entire key bed is actually shifting to the right and back. And if you look on the inside to the hammers, you'll see that the hammers, because it's all part of one assembly, is also shifting back and forth to the left and to the right. So what does this do? Well, if you press the hammer up uh, on between three strings, uh, so it's just below the three strings that it normally strikes. And then you press that left pedal, 
you'll see that it actually moves over and it only strikes two of the strings versus the three. So by pressing the unicorda, you're actually reducing the number of strings that most of the hammers are hitting by one string. So that not only reduces the overall volume, but it also changes the character a little bit. This is different than what the left pedal does on an upright piano, and of course, we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, there are a few other exceptions uh, to what the pedals on a grand piano do, and I'll just quickly cover them. In some cases, the middle pedal on a grand, rather than being a sostenuto, is what they call a bass sustain. And so the right pedal always does the same thing, but in those cases where it's a bass sustain, instead of the middle pedal being this kind of selective sustain, just the lower section of dampers would raise up. So by pressing the middle pedal, you could play you know, your bass notes, but your, uh, the upper part of the piano would be free uh, to play with you know, perfect separation and there's no sustaining that you don't want to. So there's a few uh, times where that would be useful, um, I guess you know, I could see. And then there are uh, a few other instruments, mostly in the high end of the industry, where there's actually a fourth pedal. And what that fourth pedal does is, in most cases, it does what the left pedal on an upright piano does. So it actually reduces the distance that a hammer travels to the string, and that's how it reduces the dynamic range. And so it's almost like you have two different soft pedals uh, on the piano. So anyway, we're going to move on to the upright, but that is the uh, function and the purpose of those three pedals on a grand piano. So now we're in front of an upright piano, and we're going to talk about what each pedal does on the upright and how it's different uh, in some cases from what the three pedals on the grand does. So the right pedal on an upright piano does exactly the same thing as what the right pedal on a grand piano does, which is sustain um, the sound, basically lifts all of the dampers off all of the strings simultaneously, which means that when, this piano, with, when the pedal is pressed down, Every note that's played will just sustain endlessly, or at least until the string uh, kind of peters out uh, on its own. So, as opposed to, so a key when it's pressed on its own, if there's no pedals being used, will hold It'll die down slowly on its own, but more or less the piano, the sound will hold until you let up the key. And when you let off on the key, a damper presses up against the string and it stops it from ringing. And so that right pedal, as we said, lifts all pedal, all the dampers off simultaneously, which means if we do this, you hear the whole piano. Now, the right piano, or the right pedal rather, is the most commonly used pedal both on grand and on an upright because it's used to um, extend the harmonic um, textures that you could normally create just with 10 fingers. So if I do this, I've now played something like 20 notes or something in that range, uh, and they're all playing simultaneously. I could never do that just with two hands. So it's a way to make the piano sound more orchestral or kind of extend what you would otherwise be able to do. So you're still hearing all those notes play as opposed to. Uh, now, I have heard some teachers complain about the use of the right pedal, especially for younger students who aren't really sure how to do it uh, properly or how to use it, because uh, everything just winds up sounding mushy and you don't wind up working on articulation. So when to use that and at what age to start using that, I'm not even going to make a recommendation because I know it's sort of a sticky issue uh, with some students and some teachers. But anyway, that's what it does in terms of its function. Mm. The middle pedal on most modern upright pianos um, activates what's called a mute rail. And this is what it looks like when I press it down. It sort of lowers this piece of felt and it places it in between the hammer and the string. So instead of the hammer coming up and hitting the three strings like this, it sort of comes up and it's hitting this extra sheet of felt between it and it really absorbs most of the energy. Um, and it kind of makes it sound like that. Does 
So yes, it does change the, the timbre, but most usefully, it really reduces the volume that the piano produces. And so to help keep that pedal down, uh, that middle pedal will often have uh, this extra little groove cut in it to the left, which allows you to slide the pedal over so it stays down, just like that. So that's what the middle pedal does on the vast majority of modern upright pianos. Uh, now, if we go back 30 or 40 years, uh, the middle pedal was actually less common. You had a lot of instruments still being produced with just two pedals, which means that mute um, function just simply wasn't there at all. And in a few very rare cases, the middle pedal on an upright piano actually does the same thing as on a grand, which is what's called a sostenuto. Um, that is only found on a handful of instruments and it's often by special order. Uh, it's a very uh, sort of complex mechanism to install on an upright piano and it's not used very often. And so that's why it's so unusual. Like I said, most of the time your middle pedal is activating uh, this mute rail. The left pedal on an upright piano, uh, which sometimes is called a soft pedal, um, does this. You'll see this silver part um, kind of raise, or not the silver part, but just behind it. Um, that rest rail actually pushes all of the hammers closer towards the string. When I let, let it off, they go back to normal position. When I press it, all the hammers right across the whole piano push closer to the string. Now, when would you use that? Why would you use that? Well, by reducing the distance that the hammer has to accelerate, you reduce the amount of energy that it can strike the string. So you actually wind up, um, it's not the same uh, function as a mute uh, rail uh, where you're um, actually absorbing the energy with the felt. You're actually just uh, providing it less acceleration and less force to hit those strings. So you wind up with a quieter sound. Um, but the other thing that it does is it actually creates a little bit of lost motion in the key before it starts moving the hammer. And so that also, in some cases, makes uh, playing the piano at, at quieter um, dynamic levels a little more controllable. So it has sort of two uh, benefits um, that you would use if you were trying to play the piano um, extra quietly and you were having trouble controlling uh, the instrument in that way. And so uh, you would use this in place of an una corda on a grand even though it's a slightly different effect. On a grand, the unicoder or the left pedal actually reduces the volume, but it changes the character of the tone because it's hitting the strings in a slightly different way. This is still hitting all three strings. It's just hitting it with less force. So. So hopefully you could hear some of that difference. I was doing my very best to play it with the same force, but just turning the pedal on and off. So that is what the three pedals on an upright piano does.